everybody. This is the Rape Wizards Implementation Session 2. The assumption here is that you did attend Session 1 so that you have now an understanding of how to build rates in the Room Key Rate Wizard. So today we are talking specifically about those clients that have been with Room Key for quite a while and used the old rates module to build your rates. You need to migrate those rates over to the rate wizard because going forward we will be eliminating the old rates module. As I said on the session number one, we will give you plenty of notice of that so you don't have to worry that it's happening within the next few weeks or anything like that. But it would be best to get your rates migrated now so that you don't have to worry and rush when we tell you that we are eliminating that rates module. So we're going to look at how we can move existing rates from your old rates into the rate wizard. We're going to look at how that affects your booking channels. We'll look at how we tier rates and also how we attach our client types and our account changes. So I'm going to take a moment to talk to you specifically about um, what we are looking at and the difference between the old rates module and the new rate wizard. So the first thing that we will see, what we're looking at here is our new rate wizard screen. And this is the screen we were working in on session one. And you'll notice that on this screen, within one rate, I can have four different booking channels. And then if you remember, once I've created my rate, when I build my rate, I actually build my rate for all of my room types. Now if we go back and we look at the old rates module, what we're going to see in the old rates module is that you had to build a separate rate for each booking channel. So once my screen comes up, you'll see that I have rates built here for my best available rate. But I wanted that to be able to be viewed on the GDS, so I created a GDS best available rate. And I also wanted it to be available on the internet, so I built an internet best available rate. So I've actually got three individual rates in the old rate module, where when we take them over to the rate wizard, I really only need one rate. So we are going to see how we can merge rates together if they are the same rate but just using different booking channels. Now this is something that you want to put some thought into and some preparation prior to doing your rate import. My suggestion would be to go down on your old rates module and use the print rates so that you can see the rates that you have in the system right now. So what you want to do is you can just print it out for one room type. You don't need to print it out for all room types. But what we're looking at is to locate which of your rates are mastered rates and what rates are actually tiered off of your master rate. And then within this report, you'll also see that it tells you the percentage increase that you're doing. So what this will allow you to do is to go through and determine what rates are still valid that you want to use. You can also go through and even if a rate is valid, if you don't use that rate anymore, you may want to just cross it off this list because you don't want to import it. And then you can also use this printout if you're going to do the rate import in sections. So for instance, you don't want to spend a whole day doing rate imports. You just want to do half a dozen each day. You can come in and basically use this as a checklist to make sure that you have moved certain rates across. So by using this report, it will help you to keep control of the rates that you have transferred across to the rate wizard. The next thing that we're going to talk about is because a lot of the rates are tiered, what we want to do is get our master rates imported and set up correctly in room key first sorry, in the rate wizard first. And then once we've got those master rates set up, it becomes very easy to set up the tiering for those rates that are tiered off of the master rate. So let's take a look, first of all, at the best method to do this. So from my experience, the best method to do this is to actually have two versions of room key open. One version is going to have your old 
rates in it. And I kind of park that at the top of my screen. And then I'm going to open a second session down here. And I'm going to move that to the bottom right-hand side of my screen so that I have two at the same time. Now, one of the reasons that I do this is because once you have imported your rates from your old rates module into the new rate wizard, they are no longer accessible from the old rates module. So if you weren't sure about uh, a tiering level or something like that, you would not be able to go back and look in the old rates module. Now, hopefully with the printout, that will avoid that from happening. But it does work out much easier for you if you have two sessions of room key open. So I now have my old rates module open here. And I have my new rate wizard open in the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm just going to, uh, sorry, I want to change this hotel to the same one. Just one moment while I open up my T and T hotel. I'm going to move this one down to the bottom right, and we're both in, in the TNT hotel on both screens, and I'm going to open up Rate Wizard. So you'll see when I open up this Rate Wizard that I now have nothing in this Rate Wizard. So the first thing that I want to do is take my master rate, which was my best available rate, and I want to create that in my Rate Wizard. So I'm seeing that I have my best available rate, and I also see that I have a GDS best available rate. So really, those two are booking channels for the same rate. So this time, I'm actually going to merge the two of them together. So we start off using the plus sign to create our new rate. I'm going to go in and take my category best available. And I'm going to call this my best available rate. I'm going to say that I want a hotel. So I'm going to go down here and right click and add existing rates. So now when I add existing rates, what we're doing here is we're cycling through those booking channels. So if I move my screen down, see the four booking channels I have here? Basically, I have a screen for each one of those booking channels. So it's saying to me, you're creating a best available rate. Is there anything from the CRS rates that you want to pull across? And because you're not using our central reservation, we would not have anything in there. Then it says, these are your hotel website rates. Is there anything here that you want to pull across into this best available? And at this point in time, I actually don't want to pull these rates across. Then it's saying, here are your GDS rates. Is there a GDS rate here that you want to pull across into your best available rate? Because I'm combining two booking channels, I'm going to take this GDS best available rate. And what I like to do is put my check mark in the rate and then minimize that room type so that I know that I've selected a booking channel or a rate in that particular rate. So I've now selected those. And now when I go to the next one, it's saying to me, these are all your hotel direct rates. Is there one of these that you also want to take into your best available rate? So I'm actually going to take my hotel direct. So the selection I've made is my GDS best available rate and my hotel direct best available rate. So I basically told um, told um, the booking was or the rate wizard that I want to take these rates and go back and use these as my booking. 
So I'm going to go in here and set this as a default. So what that means is that when I set this as a default, I'm going to be able to go through and book this, and it will allow me to take those rates and merge them all together. Excuse me, I'm just going to do that again. It's So now when I get back into my best available rate, I can see that I actually have a Hotel Direct and a GDS rate that has been set up. I can go down here and mark off whether or not it's commissionable. I can mark off the number of people, so I could have minimum of one and minimum of one. If I have any text in here, I can go in and copy the text from my rate. So if I open this rate up, if because I still have that screen open, I could see any description that was in here, and I could highlight that and copy and paste it across to here if I wanted to. And then once I've done that, I can create this rate. So now what we're going to see is I have a best available rate. It has a GDS rate, and it has a hotel direct rate. So what it's done is it's taken those two rates and merged them together from the old rates module into the new rate wizard. I'm going to use my edit key here, and I'm going to go in and make sure that I have the correct client type set up that I wanted to have. So I have my leisure and my online booking. And if I go down in here, I may need to um, have a GDS in here as well so that I could select GDS. If I had, I would go in and make sure that I've clicked my GDS client type. And then you want to go into your rates themselves and make sure from your rate calendar that you go in and check your king bed and check for your hotel booking and make sure that you have a rate in there. And then you want to go into the GDS and make sure that you have a rate in there. So once you've done that and you've made sure that that rate is done, you have imported that rate and merged the two rates together into RoomKey. I am going to take you out of the, the rate module here and back in so that you can see that once I've done that, the rates look a little different when you go back and look at them in the rate module. You're going to see now that instead of having a GDS best available rate, I have a best available rate and a best available rate slash GDS. So that's telling me that this rate has now been imported into room key, into the rate wizard. And when I click on here, you'll notice that the edit rate is shaded out, which means that I can no longer do anything with this rate in the old rates module, I will have to go into my new rates module and go in here to my rate wizard and make my changes for that rate within my rate wizard. If I go back and I look at my CAA, you'll notice that the edit button is still active. So that means I have not done anything with that as far as moving it across to the new system. So. Let's just take one rate that's not being merged, so it's just a standalone rate that I want to move across from the old 
rates module into the new rate wizard. So it's exactly the same steps. I'm going to go across to my rate wizard. I'm going to add a new rate. I'm going to go up and select my rate category. I'm going to name it exactly the same rate, sorry, the same name. And then I'm going to right click and add existing rate. So when I look at this one, again, I don't have anything set up for this rate that is for the central reservation. I have nothing for the hotel website. I do have a corporate rate here under my GDS. And if I look across, I also have one here. So let's go back and decide that I want to move this across only for my hotel direct. So I don't want my corporate rate to show up on my GDS. So by leaving, I'm just going to go back, by leaving this GDS booking channel blank and not checking anything off here, it means that this rate will not be available to the GDS. If I only want it as a hotel direct rate, I only put my check marks in this screen. So once I set my screen up here and everything is correct, I can mark done. I can again come in here, minimum one person, maximum one person. If I had any kind of description, I could have copied it again. And now I'm going to create my rate. Once I've created my rate, here's my corporate rate with hotel direct only. I want to always go in and check my client types and make sure that my client types are correct. So this is a hotel direct only, and it's actually available to all corporate uh, companies. And I see if we've attached it to any corporation. So we do have it attached as well to third party billing. So I make sure that all of that came across successfully. And then my last step is to go into next and to verify with my rate calendar that my rates for my hotel direct have come across correctly for this room type. So I check the first room type, then I can check the second room type, etc., just to verify that all my rates have come across. So that's how you would bring across a rate that only had one rate attached to it. Now the next one we're going to look at is actually a tiered rate. So this is my CAA rate. And that, from the rate report that I printed out the first time, I was able to see that it's 10% off of my best available rate. So here's 10% off my best available rate. So I know that I've already set up my, rust, my master rate, which was my best available rate. And I know that that rate is set up successfully. So now to move across my CAA rate, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go into my rate wizard. I'm going to create a new rate that is called exactly the same as my rate is in the old rate system. So it's called CAA space slash space AARP discount. Then I'm going to right click anywhere on the screen and add existing rate. And now we're working our way through those four booking channels. So nothing in central reservation, nothing in hotel website. There is one here in the GDS, but if I wanted it to be booked directly through my hotel, I would bypass that and go direct to Hotel Direct. Now, before I proceed any further, you'll notice that I did take two rates in the old rates module and merge them into one rate in the new rate wizard. What I am not able to do is take one rate out of the rate module and then split it into multiple booking channels on the rate wizard. Now, we can do it manually after the fact, but if I wanted the CAA AARP rate to both be a hotel direct and a GDS bookable rate, you'll notice that in my old system, I only had one rate. 
So I really only have the option to import that as one rate. And then I'm going to show you how we can go back and we can create um, a whole uh, GDS rate from that one rate. So I'm going to opt to bring it across as a hotel direct booking rate. So I put my check mark in all three room types. And once I've finished, I click on Done. I'm going to go in and make sure that I have a minimum, maximum length of stay. Now, you may find from time to time you will run into a problem where if you try to put a name up here that has already been used in Room Keys Rate Wizard, it will tell you that that name is invalid. So please make sure that you use exactly the same name from the rate, old rates module into the rate wizard. I'm now going to create that rate. I'm going to go in and check that it has the correct client type for my booking channel, which is my hotel direct. And in here, you'll notice that there was no booking channel in here. Sorry, no client type. So I'm going to go in and add the client type. Now, it doesn't happen often, but from time to time, it will not pick up the correct client type. So that's why it's always important that you go in and check that client type. Then I'm going to go in and make sure that it imported my room values correctly. And you'll notice that it has pulled my room values across correctly. So that all looks good. So we're going to talk about the situation where you had that CAA discount as a hotel direct rate, but you realized that you also needed to have it available on the GDS, and you don't actually have a GDS rate in here for CAA and AARP. So what we're going to do when that happens is we can go back into the CAA AARP, and we can edit that shell. And I'm going to tell Room Key that I need a GDS rate for this. And then I update it. Now, unfortunately, it's not as easy as it's now just created a rate for me. What you're going to find is if we go into our rate calendar and we look at the GDS rate, it's going to be blank. So I don't actually have a rate in there. All that did for me when I put the check mark in the rate wizard shell was to tell Room Key to create a shell for my GDS rate. Now I am going to go back into my old rates module because if I go out and come back into my module, what you're going to see is I'm going to have in the rates module a shell for the GDS rate, but there will be nothing in there. So it will show me that for the room types, it's blank. So see in here, I have this CAA AARP discount GDS, but it is blank. So it's telling me that over on the rate wizard side, I created that shell for the GDS version of the CAA rate, but I don't have any rates in there. So we've made it simple for you to be able to go in here by room type and go into the CAA rate and copy it for that room type go down to the GDS one and simply paste it in. Once that's done, I know that that room type is complete. So now I can go to my superior room type. And I can go in here. And I'm going to copy the CAA and paste it into the GDS version. And then I'm going to go back up to my last room type, which is my one bedroom suite. And I'm going to copy the rate from the CAA and paste it in here. So once I've done that, I can go back into my first room type. 
And what you're going to see when you go back in the first room type is that I'm going to be able to go over into my rate wizard now, open up this rate. And instead of having a blank shell for my GDS, I'm going to be able to go in here and look at the GDS. And now I will have a rate in my GDS. So I was able to create the rate shell for GDS in the rate wizard, but I had to go back into the old rates module in order to copy the values form from the old rate to the new rate so that it showed up in my rate wizard. Once I've done that, if I go back again, you're going to notice that when I go in these rates, I absolutely cannot edit. And if I was to go out and back into my rate wizard, what you're going to find, sorry, not my rate wizard, my rate module, I'm now going to have a date in there to show that there's a value in those rooms. So just bear with me while my system loads. So notice now under my CAAAARP, I do have a rate in there because it's showing a date range for me. So let's now talk about um, one of the other rates that we have in here that we haven't moved across yet. And that is my internet best available rate. So this is a rate that I have built as a standalone rate. It's actually um, going to be tiered. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to finish something on my AAA rate. Um, let's go over here. Let's take this one. We will pull this across. So my internet best available rate is actually tiered off of my best available rate. So again, I'm going to go in and in my other shell, I'm going to open my rate wizard. And I'm going to create my shell. I'm going to call it my internet best available rate. Best available. So internet. Now for those of you um, that are used to having your category and rate name be identical, you'll notice one of the things that this new rate wizard is not doing for you is when you pull in the rate category, it's not pulling in the rate name for you. The reason we used to do that in the old rates module is because you had to build the rate per room type. So we wanted to make absolutely sure that you didn't misspell the rate or put the wrong rate in there when you were building it for, say, 15 different room types. So what we did was we gave you a rate category that you looked up. And then when you selected that, it automatically brought the rate name in. With the new rates module, because we build all of the room types under one screen, there's no possibility that you could give one room type the wrong rate name when you're building the rate. So it's not as critical that the rate category and the rate name be identical anymore. So we'll find that in the um, rate wizard, very often the categories are more general. It may be your best available rates. It may be your OTA rates. It may be your GDS rates. It may be corporate rates, um, discounted rates. And then underneath the rate category of discounted rates, you may have AAA, 10% discount, 15% discount. So the rate category is really being used to group your rates together as a category. So I've got my best available rate. I'm going to right click and add existing rate. I have nothing in the CRS, so that's fine. Now this time, because this is specifically a rate that is based off of the internet, I'm going to go in and select the option underneath internet website, and then go next, nothing for GDS, nothing for hotel direct, and click on done. Make it maximum one, minimum one. And again, I'm doing maximum and minimum one. Obviously, you would follow whatever your setup is for your rates from your old rate system. 
and then I would create this rate. And once I've created this rate, when we go into edit it, we will see that only the hotel website is checked off here. So now I have my hotel best available. I'm going to check my client types and make sure that on my hotel website I have my online booking client type so that we can see that rate on the internet. And now this rate, if I go in and look at my room types, you're going to see on my rate calendar that I actually don't have a rate in here. Oh, sorry, I do have a rate in here because it's a tiered rate, but I need to make sure that I've set up my tiering correctly in room key going forward. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make sure that that is tiered off my best available. Now, again, that's one of the great reasons for printing out that rate report at the very beginning because you can go into the rate report, you can find your internet best available rate and find out what it is tiered. And in point of fact, when I look at my report, I can see that it's tiered at an equal value. So when I come into my best available rate, instead of giving myself a formula, I'm going to leave it as equal so that it is equal to my best available rate. Apply changes now and save. And now I've made sure that going forward, any changes that I make in my best available rate will come through and display on my hotel website best available rate. So that's how you will go in. Now the tiering does not come across automatically, so you will need to make sure that when you set up your tiered rates, you do go in and set your tiering up as well. Now if you can just give me a moment, I have a question here. I'll just take a quick look and see if there's any um, the question is, when will the old rates module go away? I think that we are probably looking at probably a year before it goes away. Um, as I said at the beginning, I wouldn't worry. It's going to disappear anytime soon. And also, if it is going to go away, we would give you plenty of notice. OK, so let's go back and take a look at what we have going on now. So if we look at our rates module, our rate wizard, we would see now that we have all of our rates incorporated into the rate wizard. One moment, please. Sorry about that. And then if we go back, I'm going to close down and open up my rates again. And we should see in here that everything has been moved across. So each of my rates here I now see as the best available, best available GDS, CAA, CAA GDS, corporate, and that is just a hotel direct, and my hotel website. So all of my rates have been moved across and all of them are non-editable. What we are going to look at now is I've suddenly decided that I would like my corporate rate to be available on my hotel website. So it's the same option as we did before by adding a shell for your corporate rate on the website. So we're going to edit. I'm going to say hotel website and update. And again, it's put the check mark in my hotel website, but if I go back in, I'm going to see that under my rate calendar, I don't actually have a rate because it's only really built that shell for the website. So now I'm going to utilize the old 
rates module. I'm just going to get it to reload itself. That's interesting. Let's go out and go back in again. So now I have that corporate website with no rates in it. So again, we're going to use that copy and paste. So we pick the one that does have a date range in it, which means it has a valid rate. Right click and copy. Go down to the one that is blank and paste the corporate rate. It tells me it's now copied the king rate. So now I'm going to go back to the superior double king and I'm going to take the existing rate for that room type and copy it. And I'm going to take it and paste it into the web rate. And then I'm going to go to my one bedroom, copy the existing rate for that room type, and paste it into my hotel website. Now when I go back into my rate calendar, I should be able to see in my hotel website that now I have a rate in that room. So that's how I was explaining you can take two rooms from the old rate module and merge them into one rate in room key, but you can't take one rate from the old rate module and make it into two automatically. We can certainly pull it in and we can add another booking channel and put the rates into it, but we cannot do it automatically. One of the things um, I'll also point out to you, that under our help and room key smart support, you will find in here a module for rate wizard. So if you put rate wizard in here and it says how to create a new rate plan, underneath it, it says learn how to import existing rates into rate wizard. So if you click on that, there is a document that basically has gone through everything that we have just covered. So we'll just take a quick look at that document so you can see how it's laid out. So in here it's how to copy existing rates into Rate Wizard. So it's telling you everything that you do, shows you a blank rate wizard, tells you to use the plus sign. So it's fairly comprehensive. It will go through all of the different steps that you have to do. So that will be your resource going forward for any help that you need on importing your rate. You always have accessible to you um, room key support that you can call. Um, if it's something like a rate import, we know that that's going to take maybe half an hour for us to work with you on. So if you call support, they may very well say to you that you need to schedule that call. And if you don't mind, um, if you can plan that ahead of time, that would be great so that we can go through and help you. Now, are there any questions that you have with regards to moving your rates from one, the rate old rates module to rate wizard. I think probably the most important thing that I can say to you is to make absolutely sure that you have printed out that report first so that you are following through everything that you're doing and making notes if you have any issues when you do your import. The two sessions open at the same time so that you can go back and forth and then always use your rate calendar 
to go through and check that your rates are correct. Um, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so if you do want to ask some questions, we've actually been able to go through this a little faster than I had anticipated. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to um, address them to me through the questions module on the side of the screen for the uh, GoToMeeting. I think that you'll find when you go through and do the first couple yourself and you do your master rates, if you're going to run into any problems, you'll probably see them at that time. Um, OK, so I do have some questions now. Where will we be able to access the rate wizard? So the rate wizard is here under systems configuration rate wizard. If you don't see the rate wizard on here, it is, a, is permissions based, so you will need to make sure that your clerk user permissions allow you to access rate wizard. The other thing that may be an issue is if you have not updated room key for, I guess, more than a year or so, you may find that you don't have the most up-to-date room key version that has rate wizard in it. So that would be probably the solution if you can't see rate wizard. Uh, is it safe to say that if you check all your rates in the old rate module, you can edit the you can't edit them? Um, I think this question may be if once you've moved them from the old rate into rate wizard, that's correct. If once the rates are in rate wizard, they are now editable, changeable from rate wizard, but not from the old rate module. Uh, next question. It's, I have a question about creating a rate. Can we create a rate that we use online for various specials throughout the year, but is tied to a different promotion code in ERES each time? Um, that is um, basically an ERES question, but the answer to that is if you have a rate built, you would do a promotion based on a date range, and you can give it a different promotional code for each date range. OK, when tiering rates to the minimum night stay and extra person charge, do they come through as long as the rates are being tiered? Yes, they do. Uh, one moment, please. I'm very sorry. I'm, re I'm uh, recovering from a cold. Um, I have a master bar and the master GDS bar that is ten dollars higher. Is there a way that the GDS bar off the master bar still have the rates tiered off GDS bar? Um, when, if you have built the GDS in your old rates ten dollars more, when you import it across, it will come back come across as a ten dollar more rate. It doesn't change the rate. But going forward, if you are going to tier it, then it will be the same as bar. Unless, as you're tiering, you've put in that it's $10 more. So if we go into Rate Wizard, and we looked at a tiered rate, I'm sorry, I'm just putting up a rate here.
So going forward with that GDS rate, as long as you calculate it as being $10 higher, then it will take whatever your bar rate is, and it will move it up by $10 for you. So the answer is yes, you can, but you don't even have to fix that. That will be correct when it comes across originally. Now, one of the other things that we will talk about is if you need to go in and you've decided that after you've done your best available rate, that going forward, you would like to use this as a differential rate. So do you remember when we did on Monday the difference between the room types? So if going forward you decide that you want to do that with your best available rate, your rates will all be correct now. But you can go in here, unlock your grid, and say that your superior room is $20 more. And then you can say that your one bedroom is $50 more. And once you set this up, if you update your rate template, I can just leave that there. And let's say I decide now that I want to take my best available and on Valentine's Day raise the rate. I can go in here to my rate wizard. I can take my best available, go to next. And as soon as I go to next, that template's already there for me. And then I can go in to my Valentine's Day weekend. And then I can go in here, and I can say my base rate is $200. And you'll see that it's now going to pick up my differential. So the rate that I imported originally will all still be there. It will only be if I go in and change rates, it will change over the top of those rates and incorporate the differential for me. So the fact that you built a rate that didn't have a differential and you now want to use a differential, you absolutely can go ahead and do that once you've imported the rates into the rate wizard. Uh, let me just look at some more questions here for you. So there is a rate here, or a question here, with regards to the group rates that we did on session one. If you can hold on to that thought, I just want to see if there's any more questions here relating to the um, importing of rates before we go back to that one. So the next question was, should we make this transition in one session? So it's not absolutely critical that you do it all in one session because it can be time consuming. If you do have the time, then yes, you can absolutely do that. The most important thing, though, is if you have a rate that's on the GDS, you have to make sure that you have this available to you. So best available rate GDS, because that is, once your rates are in the new rate wizard, that is what RoomKey is looking to link. So in the old, if your old rate was called um, best available, on the rate wizard, um, it will be called best available slash GDS. And in the actual GDS um, conversion table that we set up, it will be looking for best available slash GDS. So if you do have GDS rates, make absolutely sure that by the time you've finished, you have a GDS rate here that you can see. And it would probably be a good idea after you've finished to phone the support and ask them if they can please check all your GDS linking and make sure that it is all correct. As long as you've got this GDS, it should be correct. But it will probably be a good idea for you to have um, room key support go in and just make sure that the linkage hasn't been lost in any way. Um, so going back to the question on groups, because there doesn't seem to be any other questions. Um, 
during the last session you touched on creating one rate for groups and how to change that rate while creating a new group. Can you go up over that again and how to capture that rate and make those rates changes? Okay, so um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go into my rate wizard. So for groups, so um, if any of you are not interested in seeing how we now make the groups and attach the groups, we have finished the training on the importing rates into Rate Wizard. So please feel free to drop off the session if you don't want to continue with groups. Those of the, you that are interested in groups, we have seven more minutes, so I will quickly go into that for you. So we're going to make a rate. I'm going to call it my group rate. I'm going to, in this case, just make it a hotel direct rate with one room and one person. I'm going to create the rate. I am not going to put any booking channels in because it will only ever be created to or attached to specific groups. And I'm going to go in and tier this off of my best available rate. One of the advantages of tiering it off your best available rate, it means that if you build shoulder dates in your groups and you want to um, apply the uh, rate for your best available to your shoulder dates, that's done automatically for you because we've um, tiered the rate completely off of that best available rate. So now I have my group rate created. I'm going to go back into my room key, and I'm going to create a group. I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to call it test. Here's my group client type. Oh, I'm sorry, this um, is a test database and we don't have a client type set up for groups. Just bear with me. So now I can go back into my group. I'm going to have it come in today. No pre and post dates. Everything here is fine. I'm going to go in and Romeo number one. And I'm just going to shortcut my way through here. So now it opens up my rate. So once I get into rates, what will happen is I'll open up the screen, and the first thing it's going to say to me is that I have no rates attached to my group. So I'm going to use the rate wizard to go in and shortcut myself to the rate wizard. I would go to the group rate, edit, and from the edit, I can go in now to the group tab, and I can then attach that specific group to that rate. Update it, and when I back out, 
it's going to take me all the way back to my group. Once I get back to my group, you'll notice that it now is going to show me down here that I have my group rate. In order for me to calculate my revenue correct, correctly, I'm going to set up my default rate. And now it gives me the ability to override the rate. So if I click on override, it is going to show me my rate down here for my group. And this is my best available rate. So now if I want to go in and say, no, you know what? I'm actually going to give them a different rate. If I want to give them the same rate every night for the same room types, I can just type that in here. And you'll notice it's giving me the same amount for every night. If I don't want to give them the same for every night, you do have to put something in here in order to activate the Save button. But then I can go in here and let's say this is going to be $100 a night. But my superior room is now going to be $200. And my one bedroom suite is going for $500 for this group. So I can go in on an individual room basis and change the amount. Or I could have used the line at the top to make them all exactly the same amount. And once I've done that, this will not change my default group rate. All it's doing is, if you can imagine, it's taking a copy of the group rate and putting it on this particular group. So when I change that copy, it doesn't affect the original. So I can go in and save this rate. And now what I'll be able to see when it says that the rate was overridden, when I look down here, this is the rate that I entered into the system for this group. So now I can close. And when I go back in and I go to block my rooms, you'll see that the rate will show up in here as the rate that I overrode for this particular group. Again, you can have multiple groups on the same day using that same group rate because it's always bringing a copy over into the group. So all you're doing is changing the copy. I hope that answers the question. And let's see. Uh, yes, session one is recorded. Um, so you will be able to go on our website and see that recording. Uh, so I think I've answered that for you, Ken. No, you don't have to have in your rate wizard more than one group rate. As long as you've just got one group rate, then you can keep using that same rate over and over again and just change the copy that you pull into each individual group. Now, what I would tell you is if you have default group rates, so you have a fixed amount for people that come in from one to 10 rooms and then 10 to 20 rooms and 20 to 30 rooms, you could certainly build yourself the rate called groups 10 to 20, groups 20 to 30, groups 30 to 40. And that way, you won't have to keep changing the copy as you bring it into your groups. Likewise, if you have a group that comes back constantly and they kind of have their own rate, I would certainly build them their own rate in Rate Wizard and then just pull that into your group each time so that you don't have to change it. So you can absolutely have more than one rate if it works for your property. But if every single group is negotiated differently, then no, you only need to have one group rate. So I hope that that's answered some questions for everybody. Uh, I'm sorry about my voice. I hope that I will be better soon for the next uh, uh, webinar that we do. But in the meantime, thank you all very much for attending. There don't seem to be any more questions. So I will end the session now. Thanks, everybody.